section 4.2 for continued more or less not, and we'll give an example of how to have a function. First exa our example will be about graphing a polynomial function. And here's how it's done. So here's a polynomial. Y is so x cubed plus 9 halves x squared plus 6x plus 10. Remember, the domain of this function, as with all polynomials, is minus infinity to positive infinity, or all real numbers. You ever wondered, without a graphing facility, graphing calculator, or computer, how do you graph y is equal to f of x and get this graph below? How does the graphing calculator, how does the computer graph this function? Well, the computer relies on pixels, but it's possible to graph this function using the tools from calculus. We will do that in the following steps. So recall from the previous lecture how to graph polynomial. There's two steps. First two steps are first to differentiate the function. The derivative of f is f prime of x, which is 3x squared plus 9x plus 6. This factor, so you can factor to 3 from each term, 3, 9, all are divisible by 3. When you factor up 3, you get 3, x squared plus 3 plus 2, x squared plus 3x plus 2, factors into x plus 1 times x plus 2. When you set this equal to 0, you get the critical numbers. If x plus 1 is 0, or x plus 2 is 0, that gives the critical numbers x is negative 1 and x is negative 2, respectively. The second step is to use these critical numbers to divide the number line into, in this case, the domain f, the interval from minus infinity to positive infinity into three sub intervals negative infinity, negative 2, negative 2 to negative 1, negative 1 to infinity. So this is the number line, we have these two numbers, that's negative 2. That's negative 1. And you can see we have three sub -tables. Now, at each of these sub intervals, you pick a test number. In this case, x is negative 2. So the chart with this will look like is the following. We test to see whether or not f prime is positive or negative. So on the real number line, it would look like the following. Negative 2, negative 1, negative 3 is in the sub interval from negative infinity to negative 2. Negative 3 halves is in the sub interval from negative 2 to negative 1, and 0 is over here in the sub interval from negative 1 to negative 1. When you plug in each of these three numbers into f prime, you get 6 for f prime and negative 3. You get negative 3 fourths, which is negative, for f prime of negative 3 halves. And you get 6 for f prime of 0. What does this mean? The mean this function is decreasing because f prime is positive on infinity negative 2. It is decreasing on negative 2 to negative 1. We plug negative 3 halves, number that is in that sub interval line, we got a negative number. And we plugged in 0, we got a positive number. F prime is 0 is positive 6. Is positive. Next example, graph a function. There's two more steps to graphing a function. These are steps 2 
before in the previous lecture slide. We saw how fm of x, the first derivative, allowed us to determine which intervals f was increased and which intervals f was decreasing. The next step is to differentiate the function, again, find f double prime, and what does f double prime determine? It determines the interval in cavity. In this case, f double prime is 6x plus 9. Move 9 to the right hand side. Divide by 6, we get 9 minus, minus 9 over which is negative 3 halves. Negative 3 halves the real number line. Two negative 3 halves. Negative 3 halves. So in this case, if this real number line, negative 3 halves would live here. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to pick numbers. We'll see you later. We're going to pick negative 2 and 0. Negative 2 is an interval from negative 3 to negative 3 halves. And 0 is an interval from negative 3 halves to positive infinity. And we're going to plug in those two numbers into f prime. I'm sorry, f double prime. When we plug in the test numbers, f2 and 0, and do f double prime, we get a negative number for f double prime of negative 2, and a positive number for f double prime of 0. What does that mean? That means that f double prime is positive on the interval from negative 3 halves to infinity, and it's negative on the interval from minus infinity to minus infinity. So sometimes if you do a little number line, what you would want is this. Recall that f Recall that f double prime being positive means the function is concave. Whereas f double prime being negative means the function is concave down. So this was three. So. Function is concave down here, concave up here. So this is basic shape. Concave down is round, concave up is a snake. Round and snake. Concave down the interval from minus infinity to negative halves, concave up on the interval from minus three halves to infinity. That means we have a flexion point at x is negative three halves. Now we're ready to use these things together. Piece of graph. On the interval from minus infinity to negative 2, f is increasing and concave down. That means, right, if we drew this, it would look like this. This is increasing concave down. Left half round. Between minus 2 and minus 3 halves, f is decreasing concave down. So I know it's small, but if you were to zoom in, what it look like is the following. It looks like if you zoom in, decreasing concave down. Again, it's very small because it's just an interval of length negative uh, length 0.5 from negative three halves to negative two. I'm sorry, we should make it one. But F is decreasing concave up on the interval. Again, if we zoom in, what is x like? This looks like a bubble. That's decreasing concave up. It's the half of a of a spot. And finally, we see that negative one to positive thing half is decreasing concave up. Thank you.
consumer. This is the right half of the scale. Or the right half of the scale. We can buy these things out. So you can see we have this piece, we add this piece, this piece, this piece. What do we get? This whole part, right? Goes from decreasing concave down to decreasing concave up to increasing concave up. There you have it. There you go. The sum of the graph has a maximum x equal to negative 2. Now, this is important because you have whatever the home looks at. The local maximum value means plug in the x-coordinate where the local maximum occurs into the function. So we'll plug in negative 2 in depth. This is just to arithmetic. If you do out these arithmetic, negative 2 cubed, and have negative 2 squared plus 6 times 2 plus 10, that's equal to positive. Occurs at x1. So you can the local minimum value, and the value means out. If we say we occur, that means x coordinate. If we say value, that means y coordinate. So equivalently, we plug into the function f. Again, we plug in f, we get negative 1 cubed plus 9 halves, negative 1 squared, 6, negative 1 plus 10. Do the arithmetic, we get 7. The x coordinate of the inflection point is negative half, which is negative 1.5. We stopped in the previous slides. The y coordinate means log in. So the y coordinate, this means evaluate half the function at negative 1.5. And in order to do that, this is what we get, this whole arithmetic here. The inflection point, if the basis of the one for the first sense, then if it's just right in, the wall design should accept either answer, 31 fourths or 75. And remember, though, when they do ask for an inflection point, they are asking you. This time, and also on written homework for an x coordinate and a y coordinate. Don't forget to include that. All right, so that's that pretty much wraps up section 4.2. I will see you on the next Go over the next topic, which is the Hall of